and welcome to our three-part series with Marisa Perdomo. Marisa Perdomo was a three-time cancer survivor. She is currently on the faculty at USC and she is treating patients at their outpatient program. She has traveled extensively throughout the nation teaching people about cancer and rehabilitation and we are lucky enough to have her on to tell us a little bit about her story. Thank you Marisa for joining us. Thank you Kimberly for having me. Of course. You were quite young when you were first diagnosed with cancer. How old were you? I was 17 years old, uh, just my senior year of high school. And what cancer were you diagnosed with first? Uh, the first cancer was Hodgkin's lymphoma. And what is which, Hodgkin's lymphoma? Yeah, which is cancer of the lymphatic system. The general population, and most people are familiar with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma right. because of Jackie Kennedy and different famous people. This is a, a similar cancer, but it's Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm -hmm. The second time you were diagnosed, was it the same cancer? Yes, it was a recurrence of the Hodgkin's lymphoma, and that occurred two years later when I was a sophomore in college. And was it the same stage of lymphoma, or does it come back as a, a different stage? No, it comes back as a more advanced stage. So the first time um, I was diagnosed at what they called stage two, and then the second time it was stage three which at that time was it's diagnosed by location of the tumors. Oh, really? So the first time it's above the diaphragm, and then the second time it recurred, it was below the diaphragm. Wow. Now the third time that you were diagnosed, you were diagnosed with breast cancer. How did you find that? Um, the, the treatment that I received for the Hodgkin's lymphoma, one of the long-term side effects is the development of secondary cancers. Wow. And breast cancer is one of the possible cancers that could develop. So um, I, I was well informed by my physician uh, from mm -hmm. New Orleans, Dr. Good. Jane Gertler. She had always said, uh, you know, when you reach about 25, 28, I want you to start having mammograms. Great. Um, and because I'm a physical therapist and we're, our profession is very proactive and hopefully preventative health as well, um, I was always performing monthly self-exams. So I actually found my own lump. Yourself. Right. Now, what about um, those of us who aren't physical therapists or even our loved ones at home who aren't doing these self-exams? How can we get them to go and be motivated to go and get tested out? Um, I think um, well, the American Cancer Society does a great job with um, educating the public and women uh, about the signs and symptoms of various cancers, not just breast cancers. Oh, good. Um, but through many of your cancer hospitals, even in the breast cancer clinic, a lot of times they will have uh, trained personnel that can actually teach you how to do a self-breast breast exam. Good. Um, the, the best thing for breast cancer is to um, get your yearly mammograms, do your breast self-exam, and, um, you know, eat a healthy diet, exercise, I mean, those are the, the ways you can at least if possibly catch it early. Good, good. Now when you had cancer, where did you go for support? And can you think of some places mm -hmm. that people might go that they might not even be thinking of right now that they might be able to go for some support? Right. Well, we're very lucky in this time to have so many uh, avenues to get support. When I was first diagnosed in the late 70s, cancer was a taboo subject. Right. So there were no support groups. Right. Um, the second time I was diagnosed in the early 80s, uh, breast cancer support groups had just started mm. and becoming much more well-known and popular, but there wasn't anything for lymphoma oh. um, in, at that time. Mm -hmm. In 1995, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, I was in Seattle, Washington, at the University of Washington. Right. And um, they had, or still do, have a wonderful cancer support group. Good. And so my uh, plastic surgeon and my breast cancer surgeon uh, referred me to their support group structure. Good. That's where I started. Right. And then I happened to stumble into an organization called Team Survivor. Right. And um, that's where I ended up uh, going to get support. And then from friends and family or your churches? Oh, absolutely, or yeah. Even friends. places like that? <clears throat> friends and family, for me, were a given. Right. Um, it, my work 
friends Good. and then you know my friends outside of work and was it hard for you to ask for support or do you find it hard for people to ask for support I think um, a lot of people offer support nowadays Good. and everybody does recognize um, the need for you know meals and helping with the family and Good. helping with shopping and things like that so I think in many cases the community whatever you, the person's community is they're offered support mm -hmm. I think a lot of times however cancer individuals um, are they may or may not be hesitant to accept help or they okay. don't know what so to it's accept. More the acceptance that's hard yeah to they don't want to appear weak is not the right word it's that they don't want to bother anybody they oh. you know I think a lot of times cancer patients feel a tremendous amount of pressure because everybody's now worried about, about their, them, their, them. And, um, and I think women particularly, you know, we're, we tend to be, I know this is a stereotypic statement, but we tend to be the nurturer, the caregivers. The ones that are taking care of everybody else. And so then when it's reflected back on us, sometimes it's kind of hard. But, um, you know, I think they need it, all cancer need it. And I do want to say that even the cancer, the friends of the cancer patients and the family of the cancer individuals, they actually need a lot of support too. Yeah, that's it's right. it's that's a right. it's a it's a huge emotional it's to the whole family. Right. And work. Right. Now, Marisa, can you tell me what motivates you? What has helped you through all these things? What has kept you so motivated? Well, I think I have so many family and friends that love me, and I love them, mm -hmm. and um, I just. I mean, it sounds like a, you know a cliche, but I I do love life, right. and so mm -hmm. it was always okay. You'll just get over this cancer treatment, and then you can go to college, or Good. or you'll okay. You'll just get over this treatment, you can graduate from college, right. or you know you you just always I always had goals that I want to accomplish, and you know cancer came in, and it was like okay, let's get over this so that I can get back to what my life goals are. Right. And are you, you know? cancer free now? Yeah, I'm cured of, of both cancers, Good. so I'm I'm lucky. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I have here a dictionary definition of inspirational. I like to read it. Okay. It is. It says imparting a divine influence on the mind and body, and I think that you have definitely done that. Oh, Thank you, Marisa, for joining us. Thank you. Be sure to catch the rest of our segments with Marisa, Dr. Marisa Perdomo, Doctor of Physical Therapy. And if you have any questions or would like to find out any more information on everywaywoman.com or what you've seen here today, please click on my link at everywaywoman.com. I'm wishing you well in every way.